In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to use the Clone Brush tool in Affinity Photo, which allows you to take subjects in your image and duplicate it elsewhere in your image. So to get us started, let's grab the Clone Brush tool over here in the toolbar. Uh, you can go ahead and click on that to access it, or you could press the letter S on your keyboard as a shortcut. And once you have this brush enabled, you should notice a circular brush on your canvas. This circle represents the sample selection we will be grabbing. You can increase and decrease the size of this brush using your left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. You can also change the size over here in the, in the tool options where it says width. The problem with using this slider though is that it's hard to see exactly how big the brush is while you're doing that. So I would recommend using the bracket keys. It'll make your life much easier. A couple of other things to pay attention to up here in the tool options. Up here where it says aligned, that should be checked by default, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for this tutorial because for the most part that just gets in the way. What that basically does is it makes it so that your, um, makes it so that your clone is fixed to the image so that you can't duplicate it elsewhere. So go ahead and turn that off for this lesson. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my cursor over the subject right here, and then I'm gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and click once. And as you can see, it took a sample selection of that part of the image. And what I could do is bring it over here and I could just paint with it like that. And as you can see, I have cloned that subject there. Okay, so there's a few things to pay attention to up here in the tool settings. The most important one would probably be the hardness. If I take the hardness and bring this up to 100%, you'll notice that we have much harder edges on this clone right here. It doesn't look natural. So what I would recommend doing is adjusting this accordingly. So if I take this and bring this too low, you get the opposite effect. It's too light like that. Okay, so the hardness you should use depends on the image you're working with. So for this particular image, I found that somewhere in the low 30s tends to work pretty well. And then you get a nice clean clone like that. Okay, a couple of other things to pay attention to. Uh, the opacity, by default, that's 100, but if you want to make your clones partially transparent, you could bring that down, and then you end up with something like that right there. Let me bring that back up. Over here, the flow, this represents how fast the image is drawn. At, by default, it's at 100, meaning you can draw it pretty quickly like that. But if you want to bring the flow down to like 9%, you can see you got to paint it in more in order to bring that image out. So that that setting may be important depending on the image you're working with and what it is exactly that you're trying to do. So let me undo that. Let me bring that back up to 100. A few more settings to pay attention to over here. We have the blend mode. Uh, if you want, you can change the blend mode of the brush you're working with. We have all of your standard blend modes here, light and color, screen, overlay, so on and so forth. I'm going to choose uh, soft light here just as an example. Now you can see I am painting in a soft light blend mode. Maybe not a good example, doesn't look too different. Let me see hard mix, there we go. That shows you just how different a blend mode can make your clone brush like that. So let me set that back to normal. And then over here we have current layer. We can choose the source. We have current layer or the layers beneath. This image, this document that I'm working on only has one layer right here. But if you wanna add a new layer, I'm gonna add a new pixel layer. Let's say you wanna create your clone on a separate layer. If you notice, if I have this new layer opened, I can't draw with the uh, uh, sample selection that I grabbed from the previous layer because the source here is set to current layer. And the inverse of this would be true if I had layers beneath selected. If you want to make your life easier, I would recommend using layer and below. This allows you to use your clone brush on any layer you want. And now you can come over here and create your clone like this. And you could turn off the visibility of the original layer and you can see that now exists on its own layer. And this could be useful if you want to clean up the edges around your subject here using the eraser or some other tool to make it blend in with the original image better. So let me put that back where it was. Let me actually delete that layer. A couple of more options over here. We have the rotation. If you want to rotate your brush, you can do that right here like that. As you can see, the subject is now rotated. Let me undo that. Set that back to its original position. And then finally over here, we have scale, which allows you to change the size of your brush. By default, it's 100%, meaning the clone that we create is going to be the same size as the sample that we selected previously. But if you want to make this bigger, you can do this. And now you have a bigger clone like that. Or even if you want to make it smaller, you can go with something like 66%. And now it's smaller than it previously was before like that. So let me put that back to its default of 100%. Or I might just have to type it in manually. And then over here, if you want to flip your brush, you can flip it horizontally like that. So you end up with these two subjects facing each other like that. Or you could flip it vertically so that your subject is upside down. 
Or you can do both so that it's upside down and reversed like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set that back to the default. And I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about using the clone brush tool in Affinity Photo. As always, thanks for watching.